Okay, so I'm gonna start this list with one of my favorites and I'm gonna end it with one of my favorites. So be sure to stick around to see what that last one is. But this first one is Library of Congress. You go to loc.gov. And the first thing I like to do is just activate this drop down menu, open it up. There's a section for maps. So you can grab maps. And this is really one of the most powerful features of the website is the, the search bar. So their search tool is very, very good. Sometimes you'll get these search features that don't work very well. And if you like look through enough repositories, you'll see some just don't work at all. This one is very, very good. For example, you can type in like a, a year and it's gonna give you the different time periods here. You can obviously search by like country if you want. You can search by an agency. So let's say I want like CIA maps. I can just type in Central Intelligence Agency and it you know will link me to the map branch, cartography center, the Office of Russian and European Analysis. So for example, let me grab one of these. This is gonna bring me to a list view of all of the results, which is very cool. I can filter these down by date, by location, by uh, map collection or contributor. There's a bunch of different options. Then you can jump into one individual map and we can do like an enlarged image view, which is great. We can zoom all the way in on something in super high resolution. You also have this cool like clip feature. So, so you have a download menu here, so you can download in these different formats, or you can like clip. So let's say I just wanna have the legend. Let's say I'm doing a study of all the dif different legends and their styles, their design. You can clip that, and then you can increase the image size, and now I have this, and I can just you know download this if I want. Ah, that's so cool, I love that feature. Now if I scroll down, it's gonna give me specific information about the particular map. It shows me the different collections that it is a part of. And if I scroll all the way down, I'm gonna have some really helpful information like rights and access. It'll tell me if it has any specific copyright issues that I'm gonna run into. I find this really helpful as well, this section, more items like this. It generally will give you some, some pretty cool results. All right, I'm gonna navigate all the way back to this list of results because I wanna show you one of the best ways to browse maps on the Library of Congress is to click on this collections with maps. And this is just insanely fun to look at because they have all these really, really cool collections like this right here, American Revolution. They have over 1,400, um, just insanely cool. France in America, Discovery and Exploration. I mean, get out of here, come on. The Age of Discovery, there's some old Mercator maps here. And it'll give you a quick description. Library of Congress, go check it out. Quick little side note, I'm gonna be sharing all the links to all of these websites in an individual felt map. So I put together this map, it's called Boone's Resources. And I think from now on moving forward, I'm just gonna paste all the links directly in this map so you can find everything here. So the way this works is you can navigate on the map. Right here, you'll see these markers, click on them. They have a little pop-up. You can see right here, this is one of the sources, Library of Congress, and there's a link right here, you can click on it, it takes you right there. So I'll leave the link to this map in the video description. Next up we have the Harvard Map Collection. And what I really like about this resource is the fact that it's not only a collection of scanned maps, they also have a library of spatial data. So if you click on Explore Maps right here, it takes you down to this section. Now what I don't like about this is that they kind of link you out to other sites and it can be a little confusing and sometimes you have to like navigate between multiple sites which i've always hated that about like just trying to find geospatial data in the first place is a lot like that that's one thing that i hate about it um, i do like how they list out the particular strengths of the collection which i you know i haven't used this collection a lot but it leads me to believe that they don't have a very vast collection it's mainly focusing on these specific topics so if this is the kind of content you're looking for definitely check this resource out. And if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see they have their collections here. So if you wanna just browse the um, scan maps, you can click right here. You can also jump over to the geospatial and mapping data. Once again, it brings you to this website, kind of describing it, and you have to click on another page. Uh, I don't know, it's just a little annoying. One other thing that I kind of don't like about it is the fact that if you search here, so let me just do a quick search in this library. I search for like India, it's gonna give me all of these results, many of which are restricted. And I'm not entirely sure if restricted means like you need a, a Harvard ID to access them or if they're like 
basically copyright. Oh, here we go, log in to view and download. So you have to check that out, but one cool thing is you can quickly filter the this out by access. So if you just look, wanna look at the public data, you can click on this, and let's see if I can just download it without logging in. So click on this. There you go, so you can download these directly. Next up we have the British Library. And this is a really cool example because they've uploaded over a million images that are in the public domain to a Flickr page. So you can actually look around and look at their different albums that they've got here and download the imagery directly from Flickr. So if you scroll down here, it's a little hard to search. You can do like keyword search by map, but and you can do like an advanced search in Flickr, and it, but it can be a little difficult to find specific things, but some of these collections are incredible. Like this topographical collection of George III contains drawn and printed maps, views and atlases produced between 1500 and 1824. Like, well, just look at this stuff. It's so insanely cool. So now, for example, I can click on one of these images here, and then if I go to download, I can download like, uh, basically download right here, I can download really high resolution imagery. So yeah, not only just maps, but really incredible imagery and illustrations from a long time ago. You should also be aware that the British Library's website suffered a huge cyber attack at the end of 2023. I think it was in October, and they are still, as of this recording, which is March 2024, are are trying to fix what they lost. I think over like 600 gigabytes was stolen and then they were they were doing like, I don't know what the thing is called, but it was like a ransom ransomware attack. So luckily they have this Flickr collection where you can still download the imagery directly. But if you try to click on these links here, like explore this item in the British Library's catalog, if you open it, it's just gonna lead you to like page not found and show you this where it says, um, you can find out more information about this cyber attack. You know, it's, it's a bummer. Next up, we have the National Archives of the United States. This is archives.gov. That's how you know it's an official US government run website because it's .gov, just like Library of Congress is loc.gov. So click over here on research our records. There's a bunch of links over here on the left that just kind of help you figure out how to navigate the catalog because it is a vast collection. So click on search the catalog. It brings you to this very clean interface here. Let's say I want to do the same search here, Central Intelligence Agency. Again, since this is like a, an official government website, it looks pretty much exactly like the Library of Congress website looks when we have our list view here. We have these really powerful filtering options. So first of all, I can filter this out by things that are available to access online because I wanna be able to see this stuff and download the files. I also wanna go down to type of materials. We're looking for maps. So we're gonna to wanna to filter this out just by maps and charts. And that's gonna narrow it down just to a nice 7,719 records, which is insane. And you have a couple of other different options here. You can search by year. So let's say you're doing like a World War II thing. You can narrow it down to like the 1940s and then hopefully find your what you're looking for here. And we have a bunch of different options. So here we go, India, density of population. So once again, this is gonna look like the Library of Congress site. We can zoom in on our map here and see it in all of its beautiful glory up close. That is just gorgeous. And if I scroll down, there's a download button right here, and then it gives me some information. I can also navigate to the actual record group so I can click here, and that'll bring us to the CIA um, record group, which I can filter further. You know, there's just a ton of different options. Now, if you really wanna see um, just the cartography stuff, you can do a search for National Archives, and then just type in cartographic, and that'll take you to this little cartographic and architectural records page, which is super, super helpful. If you scroll down, you see they have collections by topic here, which are very, very interesting. They have these two, there's like a World War II section, Civil War map section, a bunch of cool stuff. They also have a blog associated with this page that's very interesting. On the right here, you'll see some of the links to these blog posts. For example, here we have World War II records digitized, and it takes you to this blog called The Unwritten Record. And it's really, really interesting. I, if you're a map nerd, you'll definitely um, you know, find this interesting, like right here. The Japanese Empire, August 1942. Insanely cool. I'm having deja vu, like I've 
talked about this in another tutorial. In, in fact, this specific blog post and map, I don't, I don't know. Let me know if I, if I did. Last but certainly not least, we have the GOAT, davidrumsey.com. This is the David Rumsey map collection. What is so incredibly cool about this is that it is, well, there's, there's a ton of stuff that makes this website incredibly cool, but it, the fact that it is a map collection, so we're not searching like an archive of a ton of other historical documents where we have to like find our way into just like filtering just the maps. This is entirely maps, and not only that, there are a handful of different ways you can search the collection, which are incredibly cool and innovative. And uh, let me just show you a few different ways. So if I just click on browse, it's gonna take me to what's called like the random search. And this is gonna give us 250 maps. You can see right here, each page is gonna give us 250. So you can just like randomly peruse these, which is a, a cool way to do it if you wanna do that. Or you can also filter it by these or refine the search by the, the four Ws. You have what, where, who, and when. So this is the primary way that you can search the collection. There's also a search bar right up here. Let me go back here. They just added a new feature called search by text on maps, which is insane. I've never seen this before. But if you click, um, basically if you go back here, you can do the search by text right here in the keyword search. You just have a drop down menu and you can do text on maps. And then I'm gonna search the city where I live, which is called Le Mans. So if I search that, what it does is it automatically searches all these maps in the collection. This is insanely cool. I can't believe it. Not only this, like it's showing us all these, but then we get these pop-ups. So I can just like hover my cursor over one of these and see the pop-up here. So if I click on this one here, it's gonna take me to this map, but not only that, it like zooms right in on the word Le Mans, has it selected right here. This technology is so dang cool. So now we're looking at one individual map. It has the cool, whatever they call it, the Luna Viewer, where you can zoom way in. It's really snappy and responsive. It gives me all the information over here on the left for the media. So if you click on export, there's a bunch of different resolution sizes here. I can actually buy this print if I want. I've never done that, but maybe I should try that. There's also a very cool thing called View and Georeferencer. So they have a partnership with this Old Maps Online website where this will be georeferenced. Then in, if, even if you log in, like you can log in here to oldmapsonline.com and it allows you to get the slippy maps in the different, like if you're working in a proper GIS tool, like if you're working in felt, for example, like you can basically take the XYZ, the, the information and just plug it straight into felt and have it right there. Or geolayers, you plug it into geolayers. If I scroll down here, you have interactive globes. So there's a whole page. Actually, there's five pages of interactive globes. We have the moon. There's even like Bellerby globes. I see they just added some of those. So for example, I can come over here, grab the moon global morphology. Now I can check out the moon. Da, 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 da. Or if you want to search by collection, you can come down here and look at some of these different collections, maritime charts, Antarctica, US Civil War, Africa, lots of cool stuff. One other really interesting way to view the collection is via this, um, what's it called again? It's called Map Rank Search. So if I click on this, I can search another location. So let me search my town again. I'm gonna search the moment. It's gonna take me to the city. And basically it filters out these instant search results here based on the viewport here. It's like giving me all the maps where this area is visible. And I also have a time slider. So let's say I only want to look at modern 20th century uh, maps. I can do that here. So now those have filtered out here. And I can even, you know, change these parameters as well. Let's see what we got here. We got some interesting results. Uh, here's a World War II map. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, if you use other resources that I didn't mention here, I would love to hear about them. So please leave those down in the comment section. And as always, if you enjoyed the video and you wanna see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel and activate notifications. And if you're you know, super hardcore map nerd, uh, go check out my GLRS3 Masterclass and my Patreon. See you next time.